Hello. <laughs> My name's Emily and I'm two years old. I haven't always been Emily. Emily was my way of leaving all of my unsafe beliefs behind to become a different person, to put myself back out there in the world so that no one would recognize my name. I'm blonde now, I wasn't blonde before. <laughs> so I can walk down the street and feel safe that no one would recognize what I looked like. Unfortunately, I'm still me. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I kind of wanted to come out to the world to open my own business, to be a practitioner. And I realized I couldn't do that while I was hiding. And so I kind of thought, well, okay, people don't recognize me as I am now, but that's a good thing. This is me moving forward, but it still didn't help. I still didn't have that belief. And so I started, I found EFT by accident last year. Um, and that helped me with a lot of stuff, but it was really hard to get to the deep stuff. There's, there's things there that you won't allow yourself to look at. Um, and then I found out about matrix re-imprinting. I thought, yes, I'll go and do that. While I was waiting to go and do that, I found myself watching Robert's videos. <laughs> I'm thinking, do I really need to go? I paid the money, so I kind of felt like I had to go. But my, my focus then was, was with what Robert was teaching because I understood about I was doing it to myself, but I couldn't work out how to stop it. So anyway, I've come back from Brisbane and decided I would come for the weekend, see what it was all about. And I did actually take the week off work thinking, you know what's going to happen? You're going to go for the weekend and you're going to want to stay for the week. I shared that with Karen. Yep. And here I am <laughs> on Friday, still here. Um, so I guess... The reason why I don't feel safe anymore is because I was stabbed by my ex-husband in a car. There was just the two of us and I'd left him and he'd always said to me, if you ever leave me, you'll never see your children again. And so that day stayed with me. Actually, it wasn't the stabbing that stayed with me. It's the... the my perception that nobody came to help. I was screaming, I had my, had my knee on the horn, I was making as much noise as I could to be heard and nobody heard me. Nobody came to rescue me. And yet I managed to get out of the car and run for help, went to the hospital and I was so relieved to be there. They were all looking at me. They were all, oh my God, oh my God, you know, covered in blood. And they're trying, <laughs> I'll share something with you. They're trying to get my clothes off. Who were we talking, I was talking, we were talking about road accidents. They try and take your clothes off while you're in emergency and you're desperately trying to hang on to the only dignity that you've got left. And um, they're trying to get my pants off, my trousers off, my pants off, and I'm like, they didn't stab me down here. <laughs> it's, all, it's all up here. And they're like, no, the police want everything for evidence. And I'm like, oh my God, if ever there was a day you listen to your mum's advice. <laughs> <laughs> so we know what that is. Always wear your breast bra and knickers when you go out in case you end up in an accident. And they were like looking at me as if to say, how can this woman who's just been through what she has be cracking jokes in the ER? I was just so relieved that I didn't have to go back to that house with him. I was so glad that I was out of that relationship. And I was aware that um, he'd punctured my lung at the time. I was struggling to breathe. And um, after the x-rays and everything, the, one of the doctors came and he said, 
we need to put a chest drain in. And I went, okay. Looking at the clock, I said, will it take long? Because I need to pick my kids up at two o'clock. <laughs> this was, I don't know, 9.30, 10 in the morning. It was the kids' last day at school. And I'm a nurse, and I really had no idea what that meant. No, you're gonna be in hospital for the next week. Okay, I need to cut your bra off. No. <laughs> You're a man. You know how to get my bra off. You're not cutting it off. <laughs> it's my best one. <laughs> and again, you know, they're all in fits of laughter. I'm just happy to be there, not realising the extent of my injuries. And um, anyway, you know, so that was all good for me. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, I suppose as time's gone on, um, the scariness came up again because I know that he's going to be released soon. He did get um, sentenced to ten and a half years for attempted murder. And, um, you know, I've got two boys and they're concerned for their own safety. And even though I've said to them, you know, it was all about me, it was nothing about you, it's just he was angry with me, they're, they're concerned for their safety, that he'll come back and do it to them. And the fact that they think of the possibility that they might turn out like him. Which, you know, they're nothing like him. They're absolutely gorgeous kids. They're sensitive, they're loving, and, you know, I'm so grateful to have spent the last six years having them all to myself <laughs> and bringing them up um, as a one-parent family. So I'm still kind of living with this fear again, you know, um, what's going to happen when he gets out. Um, just that feeling of being scared all the time, um, running from something, hiding from something, I need to stop hiding. And I kind of thought that hiding came from that accident <laughs> until I had a session <laughs> last night with Ilka and Pam, uh, Kim. And apparently I'm very good at hiding. I've been doing it all my life. My mum taught me how to hide. I hide from people that we know, hide from people that we don't know. I um, hide from myself. I can even hide in a room full of people. And I did it just then when I missed my spot. I'm so clever at it. And I need to stop hiding because I'm ready to be me. Um, so anyway, all of these links were made by these gorgeous two women who helped me last night. And um, I don't want to hide anymore. I want to stand up. I want to be seen. I want to share my story. Um, like I said, the biggest thing about that memory was that no one came to help me. And these girls pointed out the fact that I was there when I needed myself the most. Only myself could help me, and I was there. I managed to put the car in park, put the handbrake on. I'm trying to think what I did next. He's shouting abuse at me, stabbing me with a kitchen knife, and I've got a mental list of things I need to do to get out of the car alive. And so, I did it. I saved my own life that day. So I am the hero of my own life. <laughs>